Hey, everybody. Hi, guys. Well, from beautiful Salt Lake City in Utah, it's Thank God I'm Atheist, the podcast. I'm Frank. And I am Dan. And coming up today... We're mainly just going to be taking um, uh, uh, emails. We had a lot of voicemails. We had a lot of correspondence that sort of coalesced yeah. around an issue that you and I, Frank, haven't talked too much about. Yeah. Uh, in part because we don't know too much about it, but we're going to try and talk about it anyway. We've we've we've, we've done some research. We know yeah. we know a, a little, few things. A tiny bit. So, um, if so, that doesn't wet your whistle, dear listener. Oh yeah, <laughs> Frank and Dan talking about talking out of their asses Things about something. We don't know about. It's exciting. It's a, it's very <sighs> exciting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, before we do that, mm-hmm. we're going to talk about some other stuff. Yeah. You want to dive in? Sure. Um, I came across something interesting. This is this is a strange topic for me to be talking about because I'm not really much of a gamer. Uh huh. As in playing video games right i don't really i've had video games that i've enjoyed but i've never really what after what, i enjoy that game it's not like i'm looking for the next game what, what's your what's your top game that you've that you've ever enjoyed um uh katamari damashi ah, i love that game katamari damashi yeah that, that one is amazing of course i heart katamari it was a lot of fun as well yeah it's the same game it's just a continuation of it uh simpsons road rage yeah <laughs> Uh, whatever that one is called. Oh, that's right. You had like a PlayStation 1, didn't you? No, it or was something. a 2. It was a 2. Okay. And so I had a little bit of fun with it. You know, had the garage band and all that kind of stuff. Okay. But, but, you know, I've never been like a first-person shooter sort of no. game and any sort of like weird little adventure game. I've sure. Never, I've never really been into those. But if it's like driving a car or whatever, I, I, I can get into it. But anyway, so... um there is a, a, a an interesting uh subgenre in the in in video games that I have uh, become aware of uh-huh um and that is uh the christian video games i kn- i was hoping okay. it was going to go there i but, w- i just was waiting for jesus to show up <laughs> <laughs> but what's interesting about these is um they fit into uh another sort of subgenre which is uh, these um, empathetic games, games that are designed to build empathy. Okay. Oh, oh, oh no! There's a there's a title for that category. Yeah. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> no, I first became aware of sort of this this kind of classification of games a number of years ago with uh, games like uh, Third World Farmer. Um, this is legitimately a game no wait i let me tell you i built myself a little fucking empire in that game (laughs) i totally missed the point of the game and ended up building like my own little you were you were a plantation owner is what you were (laughs) that's what i turned myself into i i mean didn't this couldn't we is it possible to say that this genre kind of started with oregon trail um well, that's a definitely an educational game. Yeah, and it like it was like about like sort of understanding the the yeah. plight of the yeah of absolutely the, those putting, crossing putting somebody the plains and the... into the position uh, and and being faced with the dilemmas that people in those kind of situations might face. Right, right. Um, so AKA boring games, <laughs> AKA Christian games. <laughs> Uh, now, actually, some of these are, are tackling some pretty interesting uh, topics. Um, there's um, That Dragon Cancer, um, which is uh, still in development, but there's a there's sort of a test version out at the moment. Okay, none of the listeners can see the bewildered look on my face. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, this is a story. This it's is a video about game. Cancer or dragons? Is, no, it's a, it's about a family that is uh, dealing with their child's cancer. Oh, that his does terminal, sound like a fun his game. His terminal cancer. That's a great game. <laughs> you know what I want to do? Hey, you kids, gather around. We're all going to face cancer together. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be fun. So, um, this guess, is going to be great. Yeah. Um, he was five years old when he, he died, <laughs> oh, died last year. Christ. Um, and uh, <laughs> so Larson and Ryan Green uh, are two Christians. Uh, I think one of them is the father um, of uh, Joel. Um, oh, wait, no, wait. Larson. 
Josh Larson. Okay. <laughs> He's not a first name. Uh, so, uh, w- so with his friend, Ryan Green is the father of, of the kid, Joel. Okay. And with his friend, Josh, he is designing this game that uh, puts you sometimes in a position of observing the family, sometimes in a position of a friend of the family, sometimes as a member of the family. And you're having, and, and what's really bizarro about this game is that it doesn't seem to, there's no way to lose. You're just really an observer. I got news for you. And- if you're just <laughs> dealing with cancer, there's also no way to win. Oh no! This is well terminal cancer. <laughs> In this day and age, there's a lot of a lot of a lot of good cures. It's still no, not, not good. Cures, but there's um, just never a moment when it's when it's like fun or good to get to to deal with cancer. Depending on the cancer, some cancers are fun. <laughs> Well, my sister had cancer, and it turned out just fine. So, yeah, yeah we, I mean, th- it, we joked it, a lot. It turns, and that's the thing, is there are a lot of cancers now that are, you know, basically turn into chronic, or, uh, yeah, illness, right? Like, yeah, every once in a while, you just have to kind of <laughs> go get your cancer fixed up, <laughs> yeah. you know? But, I need, I need but a people, cancer touch-up. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's my dad and his melanoma at this point. Oh, yeah. He, every, was it three or six months, he, there he is getting his whole body inspected, uh-huh. and he's perfectly fine. Right. Right. They find something that's a little questionable, but cut it off. Yeah. You know, so... But nonetheless, um, so that's that's one of the games that's being developed. Um, there's also this one that I found highly disturbing called Dropsy. Oh, dear. Um, I want to play, actually, uh, the trailer, the video trailer that has been designed for Dropsy. This is about a clown who feels no emotions except love, but he's absolutely hideous. <laughs> and so you have to learn to love how to love Dropsy. Right. <laughs> and so here here's just he here just to, to understand how creepy and weird this this one is, I'm just gonna play a little snippet. <laughs> and the, so the clown is like this totally like round faced thing that has like this mangled mouth. Right, just a mangled, mangled, mangled mouth, and all throughout this little video, while he's walking around, um, he's like pulling stuff out of his pants, right? What? And I can't figure out what the fuck is going on. No, Pose Law is like <laughs> punching me in the back of the head right now. <laughs> well, for nine 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 ninety nine, you could get yourself a copy of it, and you could figure out. If it's I might need to. Do you know that dropsy is like a? It's a slang term for edema. Oh, really? It's a disease. Really? Yeah. Huh. Well, Edema the Clown. <laughs> right? Uh, coming soon to a uh, game console near you. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, there's a... Not of course, or, or this is not a foregone conclusion. There's one called um, Ever... Uh, ever Ending... I'm sorry. They did a really good job with their typesetting. Never ending nightmares. Uh, and this is done by a Catholic uh, game designer who has dealt with, um, what was it? Definitely OCD. Um, and uh, what was the other thing? This one's just haunting and terrifying looking. Um, depression. Um, yeah, depression and, and uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. Oh. Um, and it's the, the game goes through... <laughs> some truly horrifying scenarios um looks like it lives out dreams that he must have had um and this is somebody who's actually worked at it sounds like fairly high levels of video game design Uh in the industry and he's done a few games out on his own as just like his own side projects as pet projects and uh this is uh sort of the one that is he's getting some real attention for i guess And, Um, and it's christian it's it well it's christian in its approach to the depression there's a lot of oh. christian imagery and whatnot in uh, it, stuff that he's dealing with that's a shame because you know i i actually kind of think the idea might be cool to like really deal with sort of you know mental and emotional disorders yeah and just and just sort of have an interesting creative outlet to deal yeah. with that yeah, but yeah. if it gets all jesusy then, uh, then... I, I well again this uh, I've only read an article 
um, about this on ChristianityToday.com. Oh. Um, and so I only know kind of what they're telling me. I do go and like check out trailers and try to find what the, the designers themselves are saying about these games. Right. But um, that doesn't really give you a sense of like how the game plays and what it's overall messaging right. that, that an atheist might be bothered with um but I, oh oh this is this is amazing um in the some testing of that dragon that dragon cancer uh-huh. um one of the people who was brought in to uh play it uh basically she was sitting there playing and then she like sets down the controller and uh and they're like oh why why did you stop playing and she's like because my only option now is to pray <laughs> and I'm not going to push the button that makes me pray. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. Uh, I just googled Jesus video games oh real boy. quick. There's a, oh boy. a fun cracked article that includes one called Journey for Journey of Jesus quote, colon the calling. <laughs> it's a Facebook game, not unlike Farmville. It looks. Ah. Oh. Uh, uh, so it looks like you build your uh, you, you build a uh, the a Christian empire. Yeah, I guess so. Hmm. I don't know. You got to know which side of your boat to cast your nets on, or you're not going to get any fish. I know that much. Is there like a special a, walk Jesus. on water? Yeah, no? exactly. Yeah, there should okay. be. And yeah, and, and if worse comes to worse, just uh, just feed everybody with one loaf and one fish. Or oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a Jesus Christ. Uh, apparently, there's a, a whole rope RPG trilogy. Of role playing games, <laughs> uh, I just imagine this level where your magic power, right? You're sort of Mario going through the the whole thing, right? You should. And you're, 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 so your magic power is to like turn water to wine, right? Right. And so, so yeah, you're getting rid of everything that's coming at you because they get drunk. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or or yeah. Or you you know you're riding around on your donkey mm. and like you got to avoid all the palm fronds. That's yeah. one of the levels. <laughs> It's like you got to get past all the you got you got yeah there's there's the walking on water one where like if you, you can't walk on certain kinds of water but you yeah. can walk on other kinds and there's this one where all these like it's the doubting thomas level and all these fing- disembodied fingers <laughs> are, are like coming inching like inchworms toward you to poke you to poke you. <laughs> just you don't want to be poked no. by the inchworms no <laughs> by the inch finger worms thomas no dun 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 jesus Bum, 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 no. Bum, 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 Moving on, Dan. Uh, okay, well, we will move on. Um, I was just... Uh, so there was a... Um, speaking of Jesus-y things, this is a, was sent in to us by a, a listener who uh, wanted to point out how different the world can be from our world. Uh, this is a story from Switzerland. Mm. Um, apparently there was in Switzerland uh, a bit of a, a kerfuffle. <laughs> when uh, a a public school group wanted to put on a uh, a, a small opera for children mm. uh, called Neues Flood by Benjamin oh, Britten, yeah. okay. which is which is Noah's Flood. Yeah, beautiful, um, <clears throat> beautiful story. Uh, and uh, the it was contrary to what would happen here, which is that if they tried to do that, it would be up to some brave atheist or not or 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 non-christian parent to be uh-huh, to uh-huh. raise a flag and get themselves ostracized from their community right right uh there the government said uh no don't think you can do that don't think we we're raising a flag so they just one. came out right and we're like no because it would expose because it it uh is contrary to the principle of religious neutrality oh so they okay, uh, okay. they uh, the, is what's funny is that the the only English article that our astute listener sent in was one by a Christian uh, blogger who was very upset by this whole thing. <sighs> it's an alarming story of how the Swiss have fallen under the cultural dis- culture destroying spell of secularism. Ah. Uh. Sounds and it's just a terrible place to live. They've got no By culture. Accounts, <laughs> their culture is destroyed. <laughs> it's just, it's just, yeah, a dark, dark place it's to live. So sad. It's so mm. sad. Uh, yeah, this is. Um, so I mean, it's different there. Uh, that that is that the lesson we're taking away. The lesson we're taking away is that we have a ways to go, but it is uh, possible to get to a point where the government says. 
oh no 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 remember how we're when we teach the kids when you teach them at your home it's fine right but we're teaching them something that's neutral that doesn't indoctrinate right yeah i mean hopefully huh. eventually it's, a, it's interesting my hope is that eventually we'll get to the point where no one would have an objection to doing an, a, a, a children's opera about Noah's Ark because everybody understands that that's a ridiculous story. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It would, because because it's we a would, fun story. It's a fun story. If you, well, if you take it and, and modify it a little bit, it's a fun story. Yeah, I mean... You, because if, you got all the animals and kids love animals. Right. Um, and, like, you know, it's got this boat thing. You got you, Noah. You kind of have to gloss over the fact that every human on the planet but, what, six dies? Shh. You kind of have to gloss kids over love that. that kind of stuff, though. <laughs> it's just, I mean, I watched 2000, was it 2012? It was basically the same story. What's that? <laughs> the, the, that horrible John Cusack film where, like, the earthquake, it's oh. the Mayan calendar comes oh. to fruition. Oh, dear. And, like, <laughs> I did not see this. I'm, you didn't see this? No. Oh, it's so, so good. Oh, it's just a fun. Those Mayans. Yeah. They had their, they had yeah. our number. And so, like, yeah, anywho. Wow. Everybody dies. People love that kind of story. I it's guess. It's just getting the kids started off young. I guess. I, I remember as a kid hearing the, the Noah's Ark story, and it never occurred. Like, I I focused on, and I believe this is probably because of how the story was told to me, but this was a story about getting a whole bunch of animals on a boat. Uh-huh. This was not a story of God killing everybody. Well, that's how you tell the story to kids. It's all about the animals. Right. Yeah, it's it's, it's so not about the wickedness and the destruction of, of somehow I knew that all of that stuff was there. But yeah. boy, the way you tell the story is yeah. everything. Yeah, because oh, yeah. that story is the worst story of all time. Like <laughs> Hitler's got nothing yeah. on Old Testament God. Well, yeah, so, God's God. Yeah. You know, he he gets away with that kind of shit. Hitler should have made a boat. <laughs> Put animals on it. Uh huh. He would have been much more popular. Everybody loves an animal a boat with animals. <laughs> Everybody loves animal boat. Uh, it's the art of dis- of uh, what is it called? <laughs> misdirection. Misdirection. Yeah. Hey guys, check out my animal boat. <laughs> oh, don't look over there. No, no, no. That's nothing over there. Don't look at where the trains are going. Look at the animal boat. <laughs> We got an animal boat over here. No, the smokestacks, <laughs> that's nothing. Don't worry about that. I think there were I think yeah, we're building yeah. something. Don't yeah, don't yeah. yeah, the animal boat though. That's a good one. Pretty awesome. Going going on tour. Yeah. We're taking it down World the, Tour. World Tour. We're down the rivers of, of Europe. <laughs> uh don't mind the soldiers uh, that are coming behind. A, yeah. And anyway. <sighs> All right. Are we moving on? Sure, move on. Oh, okay. Uh so Oh, God, I've still got all that still. Up. Okay. Uh, Alan Keyes. Everybody remember Alan Keyes? Yeah, Con- he's a uh, conservative. He's... Uh, he once ran for president, right? Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, was sort of in the primary ran. thing. Yeah. Right? Like, I think so. He wasn't actually a contender at any point. <laughs> no. He was just one of the, one of the and also's uh, who ran. Yeah, well, um, it's tough to be a black conservative. Yeah. I mean, and and, it, and and actually get elected he, to anything. He had a bit of a following. I mean, and oh, still does. People like this guy. Well, right? I mean, the conservatives will, of course, love him because they need to be able to point to somebody and say, "We got a black guy. <laughs> we can't be all that bad. We're not racist. Look, we got a black guy. <laughs> what are you talking about, racist? Uh, got, yeah. Anyway, all right. Uh, well, he spoke up uh, this last week um, about. Uh, Ireland and their big decision to uh, uh, let gays marry. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? yeah. You heard you heard about that. We talked about it last week, actually, right. on the show. Yep. Um, so uh, he uh, he's comparing it. Um, <clears throat> the, he, he's saying that voting for gay marriage is like voting for the Holocaust. Is basically <laughs> what he said. Um, so we're going to continue on with this whole Germany thing. Okay. Uh, he yeah. says if. So, so okay, so this is his quote. He says, voting for a national referendum is just as wrong and unjust as, quote, if the people of Germany voted tomorrow to renew the Holocaust. That's his quote. Wow. Okay. Um, and he's, 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 he's really responding a lot to, there was a, the, 
the the Catholic cardinal, right, mm-hmm. who uh, spoke up and was like, well, if if the people of Ireland vote for gay marriage, then that's just the law of the land and we have to deal with it, right? <laughs> right. Well, Alan Keyes was going to have none of that. Oh. He said, would the cardinal say that the German state is duty-bound to reopen the death camps? <laughs> right. Um, and uh, he says that respecting... Uh, marriage, the marriage equality law uh, is the kind of, quote, sp- I'm sorry, is the, quote, kind of spurious legalism that helped goose step Germany into hell in the last century. I mean, he's not giving up on this thing. So, yeah, he, it, yeah, it's not like he it's not like he's one. Of, this is one of those moments where somebody says, oh, that's like Hitler. And then like immediately backs off of it because they realize how stupid the thing they just said is. No, right. he he likes this metaphor a <laughs> lot. <laughs> I Frank, can I ask you a question? Yeah. As a gay man, can I? I why do you guys always want to kill the Jews? Uh, I what is it about you gay men and killing Jews? <sighs> it's their, their style. <laughs> don't like the clothes <laughs> oh my god oh holocausty You're, it's just i don't mind the gays but they get a little holocausty sometimes sometimes have you ever sometimes. noticed that do you get that holocausty vibe off yeah. of the gays well, hitler was gay that's the little the thing that's not very well known oh right yeah. of course the whole yeah. ava Braun thing was just a whole that, she, was she was a beard, beard. Yeah. she was a total beard yeah. yeah yeah i mean i never saw them together <laughs> and this whole getting married right before they kill themselves thing. right right a little suspicious uh, what's that all about right hitler yeah hitler hitler like huh? he didn't want anybody named ava he wanted someone named hans <laughs> yeah hmm. poor hitler <laughs> now that is a sitcom hitler and hans <laughs> gay hitler gay hitler living at home oh all of these people, they are so, uh, I always have to do all of the work for all of these. Why can't the SS just take care of themselves? <laughs> oh, Hitler, you're so tense. Let me help you with this. I give you a massage. <laughs> that, Thank you, Hans. I needed it. Oh, it's so, it's so. <laughs> what did say I have had? Doing a Holocaust is exhausting. <laughs> Hans, can you rub my feet, please? <laughs> <laughs> Hitler and Hans. Da, 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 da. Okay, and that that was Hitler and Hans. That was Hitler and Hans. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. So uh, I love it when when uh, people just won't back off with the, the stupid things. Right. So. I'm, I, 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 so we'll just reiterate that the uh, the rule is, and this has been a rule for a while. It's not our rule. It is just a rule. Mm-hmm. When you bring up Hitler or the Holocaust, you have lost the argument. Yeah. Unless you're talking about, you know, the Holocaust. Killing Jews, in yeah, which case yeah. that's a valid thing. But yeah. in general, if you compare if you make a comparison <laughs> and it goes to Hitler or the Holocaust, you've lost. Well, I don't even know how he's making the connection. <laughs> that's the problem. Like there there are moments when you're when when you can see the point and why the person desperately wants an example of somebody who's just terrible. Yeah. Right? And so they go to Hitler and whatever but this uh, i yeah i'm I'm dumbfounded well i mean part of the i'm guessing that where he's going is this holocaust bad (laughs) gays bad yeah same same yeah like like he's somehow saying that it's a he's equating it to you know, the people voting that murder's okay. Which, by the way, is the argument he should have made. Mm. Anything other than the Holocaust. Right. Like, even if he had said, this is like them voting to make, you know, uh, theft okay. Right. Because the, the point that he's making is, being gay is not okay. Right. He's morally yeah. wrong. Right, right, right. And potentially a destabilizing factor for society and blah, 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 blah. I blah. feel like that's kind of... a little more nuanced than this guy's willing to go. <laughs> I feel like you've now taken it to a point where, like, oh, no, that, yeah, I mean, like, that's that's an <laughs> argument that, like, someone would have to answer. Uh-huh. He doesn't seem to be interested yeah, in that. It's yeah. just wrong equals wrong yeah. equals wrong. Right. So, kill six million Jews, wrong. 
marry someone you love, but screw them in the bum hole. Wrong. Well, that includes a lot of straight people, too, Dan. I know. It's wrong. All okay. of the wrongs equal wrong. <laughs> Everything that's wrong is wrong. Oh, God. And that's religion uh, in a nutshell. You're, I, so, you're so preachy, Dan. I know. It's true. Uh, I'm going to switch now. There was a uh, we haven't gotten to the gay uh, decision in the Supreme Court here in the U.S. yet. It's coming down the pike. Yeah. Brace yourself, everybody. Ooh. We'll probably be talking about it. But for now, what we're going to talk about is the decision of the United States Supreme Court in the uh, lawsuit uh, of a Muslim woman against Abercrombie and Fitch. Now, I would like to sue Abercrombie and Fitch because All sorts of reasons, they yeah. stink up every mall that you ever see. Even them in. an outdoor mall. Even it's an, amazing. We our Abercrombie and Fitch is in an outdoor <laughs> mall, ladies and gentlemen. And if you're across the street and you're walking, you yeah. still smell that fierce smell. <laughs> oh my god, it's so fierce. Yeah. Yeah. Have you guys noticed? But they always hire those hunky guys to like just stand around with their shirts off. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that. You're okay with that. I am fine with okay. that. I don't want to wear the clothes. I don't want to smear, smell the nasty uh, cologne. But that, that does it for you. But there's a guy there with his shirt off. Okay. I'm fine. I mean, with I it. can see that. Yeah. I, 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 I feel like where, where are the ladies with their shirts off for me? But they don't do that. They don't. And I feel like I'm discriminated against right. on that. Because point. who did they sell to? <laughs> girls girls and gay men and gay men that's yeah. it uh anyway uh so part of their their whole thing is that they like they guard their image mm -hmm. voraciously oh you, absolutely they are they are just absolutely adamant now they've gotten in trouble before for like not hiring fat girls because they well, and they claim that it's not because they're they're bigger. It's not, but really, obviously, it's because they're bigger. Because okay. they because they want all of their employees to look a certain way. Right. Well, this lawsuit centers around uh, a woman who want who is Muslim, okay, and wears a headscarf. How how what what's her body like? <laughs> She's <laughs> totally sexy. She's completely sexy. Hot. Okay. I would go as far as to say hot. I'm just kidding. I don't know. I've I've seen a face shot of her. And what can you guess about the rest of her from her face? Uh, cute, cute girl. Yeah. Okay. Well, Why didn't they hire her? A uh, headscarf. But that's just her head. It's not in their look. <laughs> uh, so they well, have get a, a scarf, guys. No, nope, nope. make a scarf that is in your look. <laughs> right. If they would just embrace it. Ah, a whole could, new market segment just opened up to it you. It could be Abdul Crombie and Fitch. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> uh. Anyway, uh, so the uh, the they uh, have ruled that she had every right to uh, wear her headscarf and have employment. This is, wait, the U.S. Supreme Court? The U.S. Supreme Court has now, has now ruled this. Uh, you cannot not hire someone only because they wear... Uh, funny religious clothes, but fats they're they're okay with. F no, what did the Supreme Court say about the fat people? <clears throat> they didn't. Okay. I don't think that that that's made. That didn't it make it all the way them, up yeah. there. Okay. Uh, but I shouldn't. The overweight people. I'm sorry, folks. But this is a this is a Title Seven ruling. Okay. Uh, Title Seven uh, is a Civil Rights Act, uh, uh, and it forbids quote it. So here's the quote is uh, Title Seven forbids adverse employment decisions made with a forbidden motive, uh, mm -hmm. and one of those forbidden motives apparently is religious, uh, religiously required uh, clothing. Right. Okay. So there you go. I now on, the only thing I want in the world, uh -huh. and it won't happen because they've got their they're very insular and stuff. Is for Hasidic Jews to start applying at Abercrombie's. Well, across the nation, I just want to see Hasids <laughs> with, like, especially men with their hats and their uh -huh. and their the the all of the getup. Right. I, that's all I want to see at any Abercrombie. And so, <laughs> where do they wear the Abercrombie clothes? Do they wear them over or under the whole getup? I. That's a that's a question for their rabbi. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No. That, good question, actually. Um, <laughs> well, I actually have a story about a church that might be willing to take up your little uh, 
Yeah. Your little challenge here. Okay. Um, because they're out to just uh, have some fun, these guys, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the Cannabis Church. The first church of uh, cannabis yes, yes. in uh, Indiana is where <laughs> they uh, set up shop. Um, in large part, uh, in reaction to um, that state's little, uh, uh, what did they call it? Religious Freedom Restoration Act right. thing, right? Right. The, um, the You Don't Have to Make Cake If You Don't Want to Act. This is the one that led to the pizza. Right. The, the, the right. famous pizza shop. This is that was in response to that, right? Um, well, this the first church of cannabis uh, was another response to that law. Uh, uh-huh. Not so much going along with it, but taking advantage of the fact that because of how broadly worded it was, uh, basically any act that can be deemed religiously linked and the, the, that is it, an official the, stance of that church is now protected. And Unless it overly impinges on anybody else's rights, but sure, smoking weed exactly ain't got nothing to do with that. Uh, and uh, the IRS just said, uh, "Yeah, here's your uh, <laughs> tax exempt status. Yay. We recognize you as a real church." Wow. So, See, now you said that they were based that they were in Illinois, but I think Indiana that, or Indiana. Sorry, but I think they have de facto members. All over the country. (laughs) All over the world. All over the world. Um, They, um, yeah, in about as uh, stoner a statement as possible, (laughs) uh, the founder of the church, uh, Bill Levin, Uh uh, said, it's a statement of love from the IRS. (laughs) (laughs) Go, you hippie bastard, go. I'm, I'm expecting love from foundations. And a lot from around the world, he yeah, says. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. So. There you go. They uh, are planning on holding their first official um, meeting that will uh, include uh, the sacrament right. of their religion uh, on July 1st. That's and this will be, be the one. big test of Indiana and Indiana's legal response. This is going to gonna be one Stanky, skunky church. <laughs> well, they're looking for a building at this point. Uh-huh. Uh, and, uh, but they think that, you know, now that people who donate to them will be getting a, you know, tax write-off. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, they, they should see their donations go up a lot more. But they are well, risking and- a lot here. Uh, pot smokers in the state of Indiana can be fined up to $5,000 right. and punished with um, up to a year in jail for the possession of just a single joint wow and right. that's just possession yeah that's not selling or whatever e- right and what so about indiana is pretty tough on this and so huh. but if they get away with it they'll start doing things like distributing because they can just say well you give the church a donation you have to be a member you give the church a donation the church gives you supplies you with your sacrament what is anybody yeah. going to say about it? I, it seems like the perfect workaround. It's great. It's a wonderful fuck you. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm amazed that they had the gumption that a bunch of stoners actually like got enough done to file with the IRS. Well, it probably took a little longer than uh, <laughs> than it may have taken <laughs> another, another group. group. And the group was probably fairly. They all. They, yeah. Anyway. They were motivated though. They were motivated. Boo, howdy! So, they were motivated. Some, uh, yeah. <laughs> so they, uh, they're, yeah. That's they're, good. That's good. That's a, that's the kind of church that, uh, that, well, th- if there I, are going to be churches, that's what they should be. I don't Clubs smoke. of people doing stuff that's otherwise, right. uh, <laughs> you know, the, harmless, but yet for some reason illegal. And it's a bonus that it pisses off the Christians. That's, oh, yeah. That's, that's just a bonus. And that you're just. It's such a great fuck you to their to their state legislature as right. well. Yeah, exactly. Like, like really, you're going to be that broad in this stupid law. When well, the state legislature is that you. douchey, uh-huh. uh, you got to douche them back. Yeah. So there you go. Their their new church is called the Douche em Back Church. <laughs> the Douche em Backs. We are the Douche em Backs, or yeah. the that's their nickname. Yeah. It's like we are the Church of Cannabis, or the Douche em Backs, <laughs> like Mormons. Right. Um, I'm going to switch to another church. This is the Church of England. Good old C of E. Aha. Anglicans, yes. if you will. Uh-huh. Uh, 
you'll recall that last year they uh, they 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 coronated. That's not the word I'm looking for. They what do they do when they <laughs> lay their hands on somebody and say congratulations? Ordain. Ordain. Thank you. I could not think of that word. <laughs> Uh, they are, you know, last, so last year they ordained their first women, woman bishop. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, they, so women are, uh, are rising through the ranks of the, uh, of the, the church of England. Oh really? Yeah. You got, you got a, a few female bishops now. Just busting, just busting for, through that, uh, glass ceiling. Right. That stained glass ceiling. <laughs> oh, dun, dun, dun. Uh, this time, uh, so this story is from the give them an inch file. Uh, which is that now these uppity women are calling for something else. Uh-oh. They're just never satisfied, Frank. Oh, no. Uh, so now there's a group of, of Anglican women who are calling for uh, it being okay to call God a she in church. Oh, no. What does the queen have to say about that? <laughs> she is God. <laughs> Uh, no word yet from the queen, although I, I know someone who works with the royals. Maybe I can get her to ask. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, Reverend Jody Stowell, a member of a group called Women and Church, Women and the Church, uh-huh. which they abbreviate to WATCH. Uh, <laughs> the, the, they have uh, started to apply pressure. Uh, they led. The, they were the ones that led the campaign for female bishops. But the, uh, Jody Stowell says. Orthodox theology says all human beings are made in the image of God and that God that God does not have a gender. He encompasses gender. He is both male and female and beyond male and female. So when we only speak of God in the male form, that's actually giving us a deficient understanding of who God is. Now, I, I think that there's an interesting argument to be made there. So God's a hermaphrodite. God's an everything. God's an all of the above. I mean, it's, it, to me, it is interesting that he's they, omnisexual. Yes, he's omni. He's omnigendered. Om, omnipotent, uh, omnipotent, or om, om, omnipotent, om, om, omniscient, and omnigendered, omnisexual. Anyway, I, 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 I go with her to the point of saying that, like, if everyone's created in the image of God, uh, it's tough to say that half the population doesn't look. Quite as much like God as the rest of us. Have you got two eyes, a nose, a mouth, some hair on your head, a ears? God you has know. a dick. It's it, down <laughs> down the nethers are complicated. <laughs> <laughs> we all know God has a beard. Where where are these? Does that we mean? don't know that? Oh, one. we Damn. know that one. Have you seen any paintings ever in your whole life? God has a beard. <laughs> I, so maybe, maybe uh, the women who start devo- start growing facial hair, mm, they're just be- be more godlike. They're becoming godly. Yeah. Congratulations, ladies. Mm-hmm. We should be celebrating your beards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I'm I'm sympathetic to that point. Obviously, I mean, I think that if, but I don't think uh, that you can say that Orthodox theology says that God does not have a gender, considering that like every chapter of every book of in in every religious text talks about he 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 right so i i that that's a bit of a stretch but i'm but i'm okay by with with the argument i mean you're ta- especially since you're talking about just a complete hypothetical just thing a, anyway just a made up guy yeah a made up thing it's not, you can't call him a person of this myth right what's the mythological gen- figure right exactly what's the gender of bigfoot what's the gender of a unicorn it's both male and female right at the same time but it's not even limited to that it's 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 all gender all the time it's it's why we don't see the loch ness monster ever because once we started calling it nessie and genderizing it <laughs> it became very upset well yeah you know i i am not a gendered it, being if you got that much genitalia going along you're going <laughs> to be keeping yourself occupied for a while. All right. That's my, and uh, <laughs> on the episode where we are going to be talking about trans issues, we've just decided <laughs> that gender is a function of genitals. Awesome. <laughs> We're off to a great start. Great job, us. We're going really well. Anyway, uh, so, so yeah, ladies thinking that God could, could possibly be she, mm-hmm. even in a mainstream big old church. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's a thing. Yeah. So if you guys have anything you'd like to say about that, if you guys think that God might be a she, 
Uh, you can write to us. Uh, that's podcast at thank God I'm atheist dot com. Or if you think he's a he, <laughs> yeah, leave us a voicemail four two four six 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 eight four four two. Go onto the Facebook page, Facebook dot com slash TGI atheist. Or also on Facebook, you can search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge and uh, request to join the group. Right. Uh, there's a whole bunch of people who are waiting to get in because my mom <gasps> Dan. has been in town and I just haven't had time to go yeah, through Yeah, blame it. your mom. Damn it, mom. <laughs> That's what you just did, Dan. No, I, you I just blamed, blamed your I blamed mom. my busy schedule. Uh, uh, I don't think you that busy. How long does it take? Well, the thing is, I have to go into every single person's account and like look at them and you know Tedious. stalk them, and I get interested in what they're doing, and I start to like read their their posts and stuff. And <laughs> okay. so, uh, everybody, maybe don't join because <laughs> Dan was going to stop. Look, you. I'm the gatekeeper, man. You got to get past creepy Dan if you're going to get into the group, and that's just how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good defense. All right. Uh, do we have some audio that we can play to get us out of yes, this awkward moment? Yes, we do. Um, this is going to be Pat Robertson. He's just, he's all on about demonic possession these days. So let's listen in. Dear Pat, many years ago when I was a young mother, I bought a Ouija board. At the time, I didn't know any better. I thought it was just a fun game. When I learned that it is evil, I got rid of it. Now my son has grown and full of hatred and mental issues. I have been through so much heartache because of his mental condition. I've prayed and prayed for his healing, but no change so far. Do you think God is punishing me for exposing my son to demons when he was young? Uh, I don't know if God's punishing you, but you can't open the door to demons. And demons, you know, uh, there was one uh, lady I heard about who uh, was demon-possessed, and the demon was being cast out, and the demon said, I had permission. And permission was that this particular person had gone to a X-rated movie and uh, had, you know, gotten all of these sex things, and and uh, the demon said I had permission. Uh, so you gave the demons permission to come into your home when you had a Ouija board. Uh, look, mental illness has many forms. I don't know what's wrong with your son. I mean, it may be neurological. It may be something psychological. Uh, he may need professional help, but at the same time, he may need to get delivered. And I, I don't know him, but uh, there are all those things you need to take into consideration. And then do, but he needs an intervention. Get something to help him. But right? it, even if she opened the door, she can repent, ask for forgiveness Absolutely. in the net. Close the door and, and send the, door. the demon away. But mm -hmm. you have to come and say, hey, Lord, I, I repent. And that demon, you do not have permission anymore. I take away that permission and I cast you forth from my son. You need to speak those words. Mm. <laughs> it's, all, it's always very serious. Mm. I'm, I'm going to do something, Frank. What are you? Doing? We're in my house right now, you oh, and I. No. Dan, don't. Demons, you got permission. Ew. Come on in. I've got news for you, Dan. What? They were already here. <laughs> you already, <laughs> believe me, I know you. You gave them permission a long time ago. That's true. I because just wanted to make sure it was explicit. If all it takes is a Ouija board. I've never had a Ouija board. No, I no, no, no but that's all it takes. Something right. as innocent and yeah, a childhood right. game. Something, right. something that Parker Brothers produces. Right. Exactly. Uh, yeah. That did it. Uh, I'm pretty, I suspect I, there's been uh, other things that Pat Robertson would say uh, would let in a demon. <laughs> all, all I can say is I've played Monopoly and I've seen what it can do to people. Mm. There's some demons in that game. Yeah, that's true, too. Risk. Yeah. You're telling me there's no demons in Risk? <laughs> well, oh. It's a war game. Yeah. You're playing... I mean, that's evil right there. It, it's and Monopoly is all. all about amassing wealth. And no, no. Those are good things. You can ask Pat Robertson. I'm pretty sure he'd <laughs> say that amassing wealth is a pretty good thing. I'm pretty sure he's into that. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, I'm going to move on. We were, we've been, we've been uh, uh, written to and, and called by a few people. So oh, yeah. uh, I wanted to get to that. Uh, I'll save a few of them for the end, because uh, that's because we'll 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 talk about them. Uh, yeah, okay. Sort of a confluence of things. Uh, but uh, Lori wrote in. She said, "Now you remember we were talking last week about how uh, some how Ben and Jerry's wasn't going to do any bacon in their in any of their ice cream flavors. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I was sort of I went into a bit of a reverie on <laughs> flavors because right. there were some things that sounded really good to me. Right? Lori said. Uh, let me just say thank you, Dan, for a new cu cupcake flavor. Uh, I will be making a coffee caramel bacon 
cupcake for one of my local coffee shop deliveries mm. this week. I'll call it the Dan. Oh, well, that's nice. She doesn't even offer to send us any. <laughs> Holy crap, that sounds so goddamn good. I can't even handle it. Uh, oh, bacon, caramel, caramel, sorry, coffee, caramel, bacon. Yeah. That sounds like, that's just, I'm not even a sweets guy much, <laughs> but I might. It's Well, it's the salty that's I being might added to it. orgasm that's, 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 if I had That's that. your thing. Yeah. Right. Well, and, oh, God, that just sounds so good. Mm. Uh, Graham wrote in, Dear Frank and Dan, I wanted to write and thank you for being such graceful examples of what an atheist can be. Yeah. Uh, I'm a 50-year-old lifetime atheist, and during my life, uh, I've always wanted, I've always promoted the idea of kindness and love and humanity, uh, oh, and love of humanity. Mm. Uh, recently, for some time, there have been a lot of shitty, arrogant, condescending atheists. Oh, so wow. I'm so grateful for your decency. I listen to your podcast, and I love listening to you. Because you are both smart, hilarious, kind, and decent. Uh, I honestly think you both represent the best qualities of good, kind atheists. Oh, thank you. Um, I, actually, the best qualities... He said, he said, I'm getting so uncomfortable reading this. Actually, get it, uh, the best qualities of people in general. And for this, I'm so thankful. You're both wonderful. Thank you, Graham. Well, th- Graham, that's, that's fantastic. That's very, thank very, you. very sweet. Uh, considering that we make, like dick and fart jokes as much as the next guy uh it's it's very nice i don't think we do do we uh i might well yeah especially when the mic's off (laughs) jesus christ i i mean i can't tell you how excited i was my next the next play that i'm going to be in is 12th night and i get to play the character of sir toby belch oh yeah Uh, okay that's the kind of thing that it's it's my wheelhouse Ah, i'll just go there okay all right Um, cool so yeah lionizing us is a little odd, but but great. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, um, do we have a voicemail? Why don't you play yeah, that voicemail from um, Cody? Cody c- uh, called in. He wanted to uh, kind of further the discussion that we we had when we brought up uh, mockery versus um, um, satire, mm. and uh, and he has something in his personal life that that helps shed some light. Okay, that. so here here we go. Hey, this is Cody from Austin. I just listened to the podcast about mocking. Um, My wife is Christian, and I have known this woman since we were 17. I'm 33 now. Been together, been married 11 years. Uh, She is intelligent and funny, and those are the things that attracted me to her in the first place. But there is this huge blind spot when it comes to critical thinking that drives me batshit crazy. But I love her. I love the shit out of this woman. And I couldn't mock her beliefs because it doesn't seem kind. I love this podcast because it is funny and kind of irreverent, but it's not, it doesn't have this vitriol that I see on a lot of other atheist pages. And that's not any way to communicate with a believer. Uh, when I talk to about free will with my wife and how ludicrous that seems, she just shut down all her logic and critical thinking because she just couldn't get over the hump. Like if in attacking someone's beliefs, it is true. That is how they identify themselves. That is their self. Anyway, love the podcast. Thanks. Well, thanks Cody. Yeah. Uh, agreed, I guess. Yeah. You, we ag- we agree with you agreeing with us, <laughs> well, yeah, and and it goes into a, a a place where you know I mean he deals with having to relate to someone who doesn't have the same worldview right every single day on a on a daily basis someone no. that he loves dearly so yeah. like obviously yeah you don't want to sour that right you figure it out you figure out how to have these conversations or you or don't. don't you know. But um, everybody's still a good person in this scenario. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Uh, uh, We had Rabbi Gruber uh, also commenting, by the way, on Mm -hmm. uh, on our kosher uh, ice cream dilemma. Yeah, yeah. We didn't pick up on an important detail. Right. Uh, (laughs) Probably the most important detail. Well, so is it the most important detail? Just read what he says. Well, okay. So he said so he says, um, 
uh, he's, he actually had a couple of things he said on on the kosher issue. Well, um, refresh, refresh what was going on with the with the the ice cream. So what? So what we were saying is uh, we wanted Ben and Jerry's was not going to do uh, bacon flavored ice cream, and I had sur- surmised that it was both. Uh, uh, it was two violations of kosher law. Uh, one one was uh, that it was bacon, right? Which they don't eat pork, right? And one was that it was uh, meat and dairy mm-hmm. and they don't combine those two things right uh so rabbi gruber gruber said us straight he says the source of is the prohibition of boiling the kid in its mother's milk right uh the rabbis deduce from this that it that it only applies if a kid and milk are kosher so there's no double jeopardy uh on the bacon with cheese just, right just or, or with ice cream it's right. just it's the only thing they're concerned about is the bacon. Is the bacon. Yeah. Right. And someone else wrote in and said and pointed out that like they would have to have entirely other machines that are right. just used for the bacon stuff. Sure. Right. Uh, if they're going to keep kosher. So that's an interesting point. Uh, Rabbi Gruber also had this to say. Uh, we had talked, uh, you'll recall, about the word war mm-hmm. and about wh- how we didn't like the idea of talking about our struggle as atheists mm-hmm. in in a in a largely Christian uh, society, right? Uh, we didn't like talking about it in war terms, right? Because uh, we didn't see it as a war. Uh, Rabbi Gruber said, "I agree one hundred percent with your dislike of using this word." Uh, growing up in a garrison state, Israel, we would sing the words of a soldier saying to his little girl as he leaves for war, "I promise you, my little girl, that this will be the last war." Hmm. In the USA, we always seem to seem to be looking for the next war. Yeah. That's an interesting point. Hmm. Uh, that soldier is lying to his little girl. <laughs> uh, if, I, if I read my Israeli uh, history correctly, that, that soldier is not uh, telling his little girl the oh. truth. But that's okay. Is, um, it, is it, it, Dan? It's, is it okay? Well, it's all I got. Um <laughs> We'll get to a few, to uh, some more emails and some and and another voicemail in a minute. I wanted to pause to thank our donor, absolutely, our donors okay. rather. Uh-huh. Um, we've got uh, Frank who is donating through uh, PayPal uh, okay. on a monthly basis. Really appreciate that. Thanks, Frank. And uh, do we have any Joyride? Yeah, we uh, Jessica signed up on Joyride. Awesome! So uh, thank you, Jessica. So that's uh, that's great. And another woman in yeah. In that the Joyride we, we, we kind of we kind of let that slide a little us, bit. Well, the, they just the, the women weren't catching up at all. No, it became kind of sad. It was a sad, sad thing. So <laughs> <laughs> apparently, I, I could reassess the numbers. There have been some more women. Yeah, it just it doesn't look good for you, ladies. Uh, I, maybe we just don't have any women listeners. Just more popular with the guys. We're just more. We're just a guys show. I'm fine with that. <laughs> I'm totally fine with that. Hey guys, ladies, I'm so sad. <laughs> You're not with us. Aww. Anyway, um, so thank you, uh, donors, and and uh, that it really is uh, helping a lot. Absolutely. Let's move on to uh, our next segment. Yeah. Um, uh. I'll start with uh, a, a quick email from Tim, uh, who said, uh, regarding equal rights and transgendered issues, uh, he sent us a, a cute photo of himself and a friend of his. Oh, okay. He says she is Thai with her own TV show in Bangkok and is very well and is a very well known singer, a huh. singer, actress, and movie star. Okay. Oh, are you bragging, Tim, that you know a movie star? <laughs> Which maybe you should. I don't. Know. Uh, her name is Jim Sarah. She has been previously married in New Zealand 20 years ago. She was the subject of a court decision then, which set a a precedent for recognizing uh, the recognizing of transgendered people in New Zealand. Or as he wrote, TGNNZ, which which I'm glad I was able to figure out what TG was because he never writes the words transgender. Oh, yeah. Um, Providing a TG, uh, providing a transgender uh, produces a certificate Oh, providing that a transgender person produces a certificate from the doctor that she has the physical characteristics of a female, then she is legally fema- a female and uh-huh. can marry, and this was 20 years ago, if born in New Zealand, oh, and can marry, and if born in New Zealand has is entitled to have her sex recorded 
as a female on a newly issued and amended birth certificate. Oh, okay. However, in Thailand, she is a man, and her passport records her sex as male. Really? Okay. Yeah. So that's an interesting uh, comparison. Huh. Uh, let's see. We got another one from a person in Finland, and that person has a name, and I don't know how to pronounce that name. But I'm going to say... And nor whether the person is male or female. Yeah, tried to look that up. I think female. I think that there's a model with the same first name. Okay. I really did like try to do some research. I'm so my best guess is but T is always the Finnish. We got some Finnish fans. We we got a lot of Finn fans. I know we have a lot of Finn fans, but <laughs> the names are just incomprehensible. Well, it's a different <laughs> language, frankly. I but I mean, maybe that speaks to the fact that we don't have a ton of Finnish immigrants in this country? Yeah, we just we definitely like don't, we have, don't have a have a lot of cultural exposure to Finland. Other than like Nokia phones, we don't really know anything about we don't have any <laughs> like Finnish imports. We don't have we've got nothing from Finland. So yeah. so to our Finn fans, yeah. Help us out a little. Just uh maybe a pronunciation guide or something. Mm, mm-hmm. But this is and 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 a gender guide too cuz we're not familiar with these right. names. Uh but this is from Tiu. Uh, who says, uh, I'm enjoying your newest episode regarding the, uh, okay. So, oh, uh, so a little background. Uh, uh-huh. we, last week we talked about a story where, uh, in India there was a school and the, uh, college and they're now offering a third check mark box. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, for their, for, so you can check male, female, or trans slash other. Right. Third slash third gender. Third gender. Is third. what they're saying. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, uh, regarding the checking the third gender option story, uh, I agree that transgender women and men should be able to check the box that they identify with. So woman, man, or other, but in your brief discussion, you totally left out the point that the third option is probably mostly for people who don't identify as a woman or a man. This gender queer slash gender fluid slash a gender etc. People might appreciate the validation that there are not just two gender options but yeah. a spectrum. Yeah, that's a good point. So yeah, I mean, I think that there is something to that. There's mm-hmm. definitely, uh, you know, I have a dear friend whose child. Uh, she can. He's a child. He he goes by he. He uh, so he's a child. He's only eight. Uh-huh. Um, it's very early to decide on like whether this is a trans boy or something else. So they just call him gender exceptional. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and he wants you to say he, those, that's a pronoun that he's comfortable with huh. for now. Right. But dresses like a girl is very, uh, is not so much skirts, but like maybe skirts, skirts too, but like pinks and purples and long hair. And because, you know, he's a child, there's no, and he's half Asian as well. So he very much looks like a girl. Uh, what was that? Their He's fe- half their, Asian, their so features, he looks like a girl. No, their features are, are, are I, I feel like Asian features uh, aren't as gendered. You disagree with that point? Yes. Okay. And I think, a lot, I, feel, I think our Asian listeners will definitely disagree with that. Maybe. But anyway, all right, I'm, proceed. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to check in with myself on this, but I, uh, <laughs> I'm. I feel you need like to really check on that one. In general, hmm. Maybe. Uh, maybe I'll check in on that. Point. Okay. All right. Uh, anyway, this this kid uh, <laughs> would definitely read as female to most people. Okay. Um. But because because he dresses in in traditionally female clothing. And is a child, so hasn't got, um, gone gone through yeah, puberty. There's, there's, no, so there's been no sexual differentiation on on the yeah, face in the face or whatever. whatever. Right. Okay. Um, anywho, uh, so that was, so, so yeah, I think that there isn't a point to be made about not just male, female and trans or whatever, but Mm -hmm. there may be, you know, there may be people who don't want to identify as, as either as, as a gender. Okay. Right. And, and that's, that's a valid point. Right. Okay. Um, should we play the voicemail? Yes, let's do. Uh, and this is actually, uh, Sparkle Darkle called in. And is picking up on uh, the same the same uh, story the same story the same conversation we had. Hey Frank and Dan, Dan and Frank, it is Sparkle Darkle Pony. Hi, I'm listening to the episode right now where you guys had just mentioned a couple of months ago how a college entrance application was going to have changes for their 
uh, sexual identification on their application to add third or trans or whatever the extra new item is going to be. So uh, there's a wrinkle about this that you guys didn't know about or, or minimally didn't mention on the show. When I went to college here in Western New York, uh, long uh, last century, you know that last century. When you were a freshman coming in, and you were living on campus, you were living in a same-sex dormitory. Now, this is going to put a little bit of an interesting wrinkle on it because, of course, at the same time, you don't want to be isolating anybody. But at the same time. There is a certain amount of got to be careful about who's rooming with whom. So this becomes interesting. This is another one of those things where society has really got to try to figure how we're going to play this one out. I mean, yeah, you could take the people who are transgendered one way or another and put them into their own dorm, but is that really doing anything for you versus do you want someone who is physically male living with the girls or someone who is physically female living with the boys in between. It's that's that I don't know how much of that is able to be unpacked or anything, but it's a piece that I just thought, wow, I don't know if this is gonna make matters better or worse. Meantime as always you take care of yourself, everybody in the forums take care. And I will speak with you again sometime in the near future. Bye 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 bye. Well thanks Sparkle. Yeah. Uh it's an it's yeah, it's an interesting point. Mm-hmm. I wonder. Uh, I I think we may have missed the boat on one thing, and that is. I get that like, there's the there's the whole you know girls dorm and boys boys dorm thing. Mm-hmm. I think we're to the point where we need to start abandoning that concept. Yeah, because because of a lot of things, you're not going to do a third dorm, right? right? In in the context of like let's say like this one school right that's saying male female and wh- however they're categorizing the other right right the third gender right um, you're not you're not gonna ostracize not, people into a third right. dorm these people like like we said last last week people should be able to opt into fully the gender that they that they identify with right right and so you check male you're male right right but that's that's even skipping the point of now it starts to become this weird, almost arbitrary distinction, you yeah. know, like, like we were saying before the show, like, just have one big building. What? And That's the thing. People who have like a preference that they're, that, okay, I want to room with, an, you know, I'm male and I want to room with another male student. And okay, there's going to be another one, another person who's in the same situation. Right. You two get to go be roommates, right? But you're not, you're, I mean, we now know. That uh, that there are these things called homosexuals, <laughs> so you're not going to necessarily. I mean, there's nothing about like oh, oh, only men are together that keeps you from being like in the object of the object of someone's affection or or, or attraction, attraction or whatever yeah. necessarily. Uh-huh. So like, you're not. It's not like there's this safety from right. from sexuality if we anyway. group all the boys together and group exactly. all the girls together. Right. That doesn't exist. Right. So let's call it everybody has to be appropriate sexually. Right. But we can put everybody together into the same building and the world isn't going to fall apart. It seems like the whole concept is based on this antiquated notion of like sex is bad and we got to save ourselves from sex. Oh, my Mm -hmm. God. And Mm -hmm. because before the 50s, I want people should know nobody had sex on college campuses before marriage. That's true. It just never happened. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because yeah. they, they they had a very good understanding of what it meant to be a man and what it right. meant to be a woman. Right, and what the rules were. <laughs> there were definite rules. There were yeah. rules. You know, oh my no God. such thing as like, uh, uh, you know, anyway. Yeah. I was about uh, to complicate the situation <laughs> in a way that, yeah. But it seems ridiculous at this point in this, and you know, as we look at scientifically what we know uh-huh. uh and you know what we know of sexuality what we know of gender yeah uh genderizing dorms is dumb yeah i want the kind of future that you see represented in some of our finer science fiction <laughs> like you know starship troopers oh my god uh, you yeah, know of course you're going to 
You know, a fantastic film. A, a, a fine, fine actually, work an, of cinematic under, art. Actually, I will say this: an underappreciated film. Okay, it's 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 got a little more going on for it than what people thought it was. Wait, well, that wasn't the one with Matt LeBlanc in it, was it? Uh, no. Hang on, I'm gonna have to look it up. Uh, that was the one with uh, what was his name? Very handsome young man. Mm. Probably not so young anymore. Um, 1997. Yeah. Starship Troopers with, uh, who was in it? Casper Van Dien. That's who it was. Yes. Oh, Neil Patrick Harris. Neil Patrick Harris was in it. Yeah. He plays a a, a, kind of a scientist type, if I remember right. Yeah. But anyway, it had more going on for it. That's not what we're talking about. But what it did have were these, uh, it was was very, um, integrated military mm. right where men and women there were no there was no sense of like any kind of gender role right of what was the leaders were women generals were women you know generals there were also men who were generals and and the 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 the, the men and women of the fighting forces were in you know whatever you call them little platoons or whatever together right, right. and uh and they, and bunked. they sh- bunked together showered together were naked in front of each other and it it was just no big deal it's just well and and, and so that's the, where we need to get to is that we we need to divorce nakedness and gender from sex right yeah these are not the same thing no not at all seeing a naked body i mean we're god damn it. but if you've this never is... seen a naked like if you've only ever seen your body naked and maybe your spouse's body naked then of course you're going to freak out about it, right? Yeah. And then it's like this oh, naked body because it's it's the only time you've ever been naked has been with sex, right? Yeah, you've your or, only you're association yourself. with with nudity w- in the presence of another person uh-huh. is is sex. Yeah, and so of course you think that nudity is about sex or the locker room, right? Right, and then in, and then there's all this like. You know, with the men in particular, there's you got to like posture and like show off your male dominance and this and that. And <laughs> I, I, I never did that. Was you I may do- not. You, was you, I doing you it wrong? Did not witness that well, in a locker room. I wasn't aware. I probably was not aware as aware of it as you were because uh. you were probably a, you, your locker room experience was probably va- vastly different from mine. You had mm-hmm. a lot of different concerns than yeah. I did yeah. as a as a gay man. Yeah. Um, yeah, I my my most recent locker room experience was at a at a hot springs in Colorado where mainly the experience was that very very big fat men were walking around totally naked like Uh-oh. walking freely around it was a very large uh, locker room and I was just like just why why are you parading around I, it, I had no problem with it. I just didn't understand Sounds it. Sounds like you have a little bit of a problem. I was. I don't. But wh- I mean, it's not like there were hot guys there too. They weren't walking around all naked. It wasn't. It just seemed like they wanted to display more than more they than had anybody more else. More to display, Dan. They did. They had significantly more to display. <laughs> it's pretty liberating. To Maybe be a fat man in a in a locker room. To, yeah, it probably is. There you go. All right. Take off all your clothes. You don't get to do that in normal settings. I certainly didn't. Or, wouldn't shame any of them for it. Just go ahead. Be look you. At me. I mean, you and I have both been to Burning Man, Frank, and there's so there's this whole nudity mm-hmm. element to mm-hmm. Burning Man. Mm-hmm. And I admit that I like did some research before I went to Burning Man on like nude, like like nudist colonies and just ah. nudism as a concept, Pro- just because etiquette. I wanted to know some etiquette, and mm-hmm. I wanted to know, like, what is this about? And, like, mm. I thought maybe I would probably walk around naked, too, and I wanted to know what that experience was like because I'd never done it with mm-hmm. other people around mm. on, a, on, a, on a scale like that. Mm. And what's shocking about it is how instantly you don't care. Mm. It Like, you're worried, like, oh, no, am I going to get a boner? Oh, no, am I going to, like, look ar- – am I going to be staring at naked people or whatever? But, no, you just, like – it's so quick how your brain your brain just suggests to oh this isn't sexual this is just walking around mm, mm-hmm. this is just living mm. so mm. yeah hmm. I don't know what was your experience of all the, the nudity and burning oh man? dear god just too much of it <laughs> <laughs> no the uh, puritan the, <laughs> the, uh, the shirt cockers I thought was always <laughs> the Donald I, Duckers yeah I was always a little not 
what's the right word? Fascinated is the only word that comes to mind. <laughs> it's an interesting it's, phenomenon. I, I really just want my dong hanging out. I don't yeah. want you seeing my torso. Right. I, I'm still self-conscious about the love handles. Yeah. But I want everybody. Because it was mainly the middle-aged men. Yeah. Right? You didn't have like a 20-year-old in-shape guy walking around with a shirt on. And, and no, no pants. pants. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The- so it's clear kind of what's going on. <laughs> but at the same time, here's my junk. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Look at it. Here there it is. There folks. you go. It felt more. It actually felt like they were on more on display than perhaps the people who are just completely naked. Yeah, the people who are fully naked don't seem, or who maybe just have like a little vest or a little scarf. Or right. Yeah. Whatever. Oh, right. sure. You want. You might want to accessorize. Yeah. 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 You're not stark naked. Right. And you got to have your boots. And on. And you have shoes on. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, it does. It does seem like they're. A little they're utility a, belt of some if, kind. If they're wearing a full shirt and then no pants, there's a there's something extra yeah. happening. <laughs> um, let me go back to the uh, emails here. Um, hi, Frank and Dan. This is from uh, Thomas. Mm. Hi, Frank and Dan. Trans guy here. Oh. Uh, during your last show, you mentioned that you thought some trans people probably just wanted to identify as their gender and not as trans plus whatever they are, which oh, is totally yeah. accurate, huh. but also a bit of a hot topic in the trans community. Oh, really? Many believe that there is an imp- that it is important to be open about the fact that you are trans, mm-hmm. even if you, quote, pass as the gender you identify with. Because it's visi- because visibility is important when it comes to breaking down people's in- incorrect perceptions about the community. And oh, yeah. like they say, uh, the best cure for homophobes is finding out that someone they love is gay. Hmm. Uh, while I definitely see where <laughs> they're coming always from. Work, though. No, 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 no. <laughs> does not There's always. no guarantees there. <laughs> <clears throat> While I definitely see where they're coming from, and visibility is important, <clears throat> I and many other trans people believe that right now, unfortunately, identifying as openly trans after you pass often keeps people from seeing you as what you, how you want to be seen, or mm. seeing you as you, or mm. seeing you as you want to be seen. Sorry, right, right, right. I wasn't reading that well. Okay. Uh, since many categorize trans man as a different thing than man, I, for one, am open about my identity. While I don't pass, uh, and this is and this and use this time to try and educate those around me here in Southern Utah, but do not plan to openly identify as trans when I do, unless hmm. it is for some reason uh, relevant. I honestly don't even plan to, on telling my kids unless it would somehow help them hear help them to hear it. Hmm. I'll just be their dad. Uh, this stance may hmm. change, but it is my current one. Hmm. Uh, so there you go. Um, interesting. P.S. By the way, he has a postscript here. Uh, it is probably good for me to note that some people do not choose to or cannot quote pass, uh, or have an identity considered unusual. So they will often be labeled as trans their whole life, whether they want to be or not. Right. Yeah. And that's a trick, isn't it? Uh, hmm. these, these are big considerations. If I were trans, and, uh, and like, if I could pass, I imagine there would be many scenarios in which I would not want to say I'm trans, right? Because that adds so much baggage mm-hmm. to just what could just be a simple interaction, right? And it's an option that not every trans person has. No, yeah. there are plenty of trans people who just will never pass. Who like, and there and will who, always be whispers at the coffee shop. Oh my God, look! Do you see him? Her? Right. Oh, it's a he, she. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Right, right, right. And, like, unfortunately, that's just that's just going to be their lot because, you know, they just have a super masculine body mm-hmm. and they have a feminine uh, identity. And yeah. that's just how they are. And, they're you know, and not everyone can afford Caitlyn Jenner level surgery slash right. touch up slash whatever Caitlyn went through. To right. look the way she did on the cover of whatever the fuck magazine she was on. Um, Vanity Fair? <clears throat> okay. I don't know. Um, but, you know, it's like not not everybody can afford that. And, yeah. you know, I know some trans people who, you know, just they're just never going to pass. And, they you know, they have to just deal with that. It's the, it's the trade-off for feeling like they are honoring who they really are. Mm-hmm. That they don't ever get to be fully accepted as the gender that they identify mm-hmm. as. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a rough uh, thing. I, 
I think things are slowly changing for trans people. More and more people are being aware. It it does seem to be that there is at least a little bit more of a national conversation about it. Part, uh, you know, thanks to, uh, you know, Caitlyn Jenner. Right. Well, Um, I mean, if there's a family that knows how to get a message into the world, (laughs) it is the Jenner slash Kardashian family. It's also, though, I mean, we're within, you know, the the first year of uh, Transparent right on uh on amazon a, a series that they produced uh feet with uh jeffrey tambor as in, a trans as woman. a trans woman um, in transition in transition so that's interesting uh-huh um and you know the, so, so there, there, there are more and more stuff going on and it, it, it seems what i find so interesting about the topic uh is that it, it th- there's sort of surprising places where um acceptance seems to come from like there's parents with their kids these days i'm sure it's not you know universally the case but like like uh, uh this american life that i listened to not so not so long ago of these parent these remarkable parents who really listened to their child and really like respected their child's pers- you know uh, identity Mm. their gender identity here's a perhaps uh you know they they uh brought a boy into the world right Mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden their son is telling them that that he feels like he's actually a girl yeah and then they help him transition into you know a new name a new gender identity and it's phenomenal you know i think so people's on discomfort with this concept uh, uh it's it's an it's it's a concept that i was really uncomfortable with for a long time yeah uh and 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 even while i was an atheist so i don't think we can just boil it down to it being a religious discomfort i right. think that there's a cultural and and a, and an identity discomfort there's something hard to process about someone who uh, whose identity doesn't match their physicality yeah. because it's because my identity is so rooted in my physicality right. and so rooted in in what I was what I've well, always been told I am and and we and 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 one of the things that I run into where I end up running into the most discomfort is when dealing with pronouns because mm-hmm. I I find myself second guessing you know mm. as the word he's about to come out of my, my mouth. I'm, I'm like, no, 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 but it's she, but, but, it, but it probably would have been just fine. And, huh, huh, you yeah. know, and I just start going back and forth and because we're not used to this, right. You know, obviously, you know, people who have more experience with the trans community, they get more acclimated with, with these issues. They, they understand that, you know, even just asking the question, yeah. you know, and that's the thing. If you haven't picked up on which gender pronoun a person wants, just be honest and ask. Yeah, just I, and you don't have to be. A, I mean, the problem is that there, people can be jerks in asking that question. No, but no, no. no. It's, this, but about, n- this is about an honest, real, like you know, right? There's nothing hurtful about saying, "I'm sorry. What gender identifiers do you want me to use?" Right. With you? Right. I, you know, I, I, I don't know how to. I don't know how to refer to you right now. Right. I. uh and and if you're if you're sincere, right, you're not going to offend, right? Exactly. There, and there are also moments, you know, I have friends who, my whole knowing of them, they were he, right, and now they're she, right, and they are going to be forgiving if every now and then I say he instead right. of she because it's just that's habitual. That's right. just that's just like that's how I knew you for a long time. Right. It's going to take my brain a while. To like reprogram itself, right? To reassign uh, your your gender identity, exactly. And but the other thing that we also have to remember um, is that it is it's never the responsibility of a member of any community to <laughs> to educate people who uh, that's, you know that's right the, who, who are not members of their community so many of them you, will you take should, it on themselves to to th- they'll do educate. it and if you ask uh if you they'll probably go down that road with you and have the conversation if you just keep asking questions especially if you're sincere and you're not being a jerk or whatever 
but but it's not their job you should there's this thing called google uh-huh. <laughs> yeah you 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 can educate yourself yeah and uh and that's important to remember with race and with with uh gender and sexuality, and sexuality. all of those things like yeah it's, if you if you happen to meet a transgendered person on an airplane right it's not their job to teach you all about the issues of transgender no. people as In a matter of fact, fact you know when danielle mascado first came out as transgender uh and she was still the PR director of American Atheists. Right. She was like, look, I appreciate everybody like wanting to know more, but don't come to me about trans issues. Right. My ex- field of expertise is atheist issues. Yeah. Go, I can refer you to people who are experts on trans issues. Yeah. But don't come to me. I'm just, I'm just a trans person. It's not like I'm an expert on all of the issues. Right. Exactly. Uh, which is, yeah. I mean, people... People are curious, and I get that and stuff, but it's yeah, it's not it's not everyone's job to like you're a member of a community. It's not necessarily your job to take that whole community on your shoulders. Exactly. Yeah, uh, and not everyone who's a member of a community, including the atheist community, is qualified to talk well <laughs> and intelligently <laughs> about their own community. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I can think of a few people that I don't want representing. The atheist community. Rude, Dan. I am rude. It's Ugh. just how I am. Hmm. So there you are. Uh, you know, the, the vitriol and the hatred that came out uh, when Caitlyn Jenner, uh, you, you know, revealed herself to mm. the world yeah. has, has been interesting. But it, uh, it has also been interesting to see that some people who, you know, five years ago, if this had happened, would have written truly hateful stuff mm-hmm. are now writing mildly introspective stuff <laughs> like what's they're mean? writing slightly less hateful and slightly more interested oh. stuff like i i'm one of my friends in particular who's a, a very conservative guy and a blogger uh-huh. was definitely transphobic in what he said though he specifically was like i don't you know he he tried to play it off like i know that asking these questions is gonna make pe- some people think i'm transphobic like trying to head that off at the pass. And but the questions he asked were fine. It was how he was talking about Caitlin that was what made him transphobic. Oh wow. Okay. But he had interest some interesting questions to ask. And and in the end his conclusion was, you know what? It's none of my business. I'm probably never going to encounter Caitlin, but if I do, I have no problem calling her she. That's mm. going to be, you know, that's I don't need to be unkind. Right. That to me was progress. Yeah. That to me is there's a little bit, uh, you know, somebody on, on in the members only lounge posted a thing that was a, a blog post by a Christian uh-huh. asking other Christians not to write a, uh, uh, in social media about Caitlyn Jenner or technically asking people not to write about Bruce Jenner. This is a person who has not fully accepted uh, <laughs> trans uh, issues, but says, uh, you know, look to yourself, says, you know, many of you, this is this is him writing to other christians and he says uh-huh. many of you are either looking at porn or something close to it uh blah 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 but says you know basically says uh that all sexual perversion is a result of human con- corruption you have it i have it too but you might want to reconsider uh publicly shaming one perversion when you have another now that's problematic because it's still calling transsexuality a perversion yeah but at very least it's saying you know what is this person any worse than any of us? Yeah. <clears throat> it's a it's an interesting all I'm saying is it's still bad. Yeah. It, he, this person's still wrong. It is <clears throat> it seems to be preaching and it's not the greatest word in the universe, but tolerance. Yeah. So, at, and, 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 and at tolerance very least seems to always be a first step toward acceptance. So and, and at very least introspection. Yeah. Cast the first stone yeah. if you're without sin. At very least, it seems to be following Jesus' own dictates, mm. which for a Christian, a Christian that's, that's, it's actually more rare than you might think. <laughs> that's hard. Yeah. They don't do that very often. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, I see small glimmers of hope in the massive sea of hatred and vitriol. So that's Ugh. nice. Yeah. Uh, and in the meantime, we as a community can... I think we have to embrace the transgender community, the atheists. Mm-hmm. I, atheism doesn't have dogma. Atheism, atheism isn't a religion. But uh, 
I, if we're going to be rational and reasonable, mm-hmm. I think we have to just say uh, we have to go with the best science that's available, which right. which right now b- very much says gender identity is not what we thought it was a hundred years ago. Right, and let's just roll with it. Yeah, yeah. So hmm. there you go. That's uh, that's some that's two cents worth. Uh, if you'd like to. Uh, Put in your two cents, uh, please do. You can write to us uh, podcast at thankgodimatheist.com or you can uh, leave us a voicemail. The telephone number is 424 666 8442. Right. Uh, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGI Atheist or on Facebook, search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge. Yeah. Uh, this, I, I'm, I'm enjoying this discussion on trends. Transgendered mm-hmm. issues. I think. Uh, I think we hopefully we'll get some interesting more feedback. Yeah. Uh, about that issue. Um, thanks to Mackenzie for handling our Facebook page. It's a uh, it's a godsend that she does that for us. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thanks to the Red Rock Hot Club for letting us use their music. Fine music it is. And thank you, listeners, for all of your listening. Uh, and we will uh, see you next week. Bye bye.